Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome back uh, we were in the process of deriving relationships between variables across the normal shock for varying Mach numbers for the incoming flow that is what we were doing. In that uh, we had a point where we had to decide which shock will actually happen either expansion shock or compression shock. And uh, we went through uh, entropy arguments and we showed that I uh, will go and draw that plot here again. We had a plot that was looking like this that is for Mach number less than 1, we were having delta S by R that was slightly negative or more negative depending on very low Mach numbers. For very high Mach numbers more than 1, we are going to have delta S positive and we said that uh, because of this reason, we are going to say only M 1 greater than 1 going to M 2 less than 1 that is the only solution that is possible, uh, which corresponds to my gas gets compressed across the shock. So, we are talking it is only compression shock is possible that is what we said and uh, I also was very careful and telling you the statement that was uh, when we say only compression shock is possible I also included this thing saying it is it is for our air ok. If I want to think about I am currently going beyond the course curriculum I am just telling you if you are interested you can go read up more. Um, if we are in a gas which does not obey P equal to rho R T this is what we have been using all this time we said P equal to rho R T for us our gas and so we got this behavior ok. If there is a gas where this is not true say if we if I take the van der Waals equation which is also known to people already. So, I am using that an equation of this form where A and B are two constants for that particular gas for that range of pressures and temperatures which we are interested in. This is going to be the equation for such gases where if I say A and B are 0 it becomes P equal to rho R T if there is a gas that is obeying this then we can call it either the van der Waals gas van der Waals gas or they gave a better name for it as in people who studied this based on them they get, get a name it is called the BZT gas BZT flows is what they call for flows with this kind of gas. It is for three different people the names are uh, Bethe, uh, Zeldovich, I think there is an apostrophe somewhere here. Yeah. And the third guy is Thompson. I will write Thompson here. These people worked in the 1940s and uh, he worked in 1970, uh, 60s and 70 and uh, they studied flows where expansion shocks are probably possible. Okay. The way it works is like this, I will go to a plot here of our state diagram. I am going to use P and V and uh, for our common gas it is going to look like this for T equal to constant line. 
but if my pressures and temperatures are very low where van der Waals forces are important or my gas is such that it is important, the curve may look like this. If you are very close to say condensation of water vapor kind of ranges, things may change and do crazy things like this. Okay. I am not sure whether air with uh, this little percentage of water vapor will it affect, I do not think it affects, okay. but I may get such a curve for special gases. Typically, the refrigerants which people use will have such characteristics. Anyways, in this range, the gas may behave differently because this is the opposite slope of dP by d rho I will get here compared to all the other places. This behavior is similar to this behavior, this behavior is similar to this behavior, but in this small zone alone, if my temperature and pressure and volume or pressure and temperature are such that my gas is operating in this range then I may have expansion shocks and only compression, uh, compression waves are sp spreading away from each other that is also possible. Okay. This of course, is not in the scope of this particular course, I am just telling you there are things that are out there which we do not deal with in our course, that is the only thing I will say about this and then we will not talk about BZT flows anymore, okay. it is there somewhere we are there are some gases where we can have expansion shocks and compression fans. Of course, you do not know what they are right now, so I should not be talking about it more. Now, we will go back and derive every ratio variable which you have been deriving all this time in terms of m 1 and m 2 in just terms of m 1 alone, just one variable. Okay. So, we had this variable p 2 by p 1 which is 1 plus gamma m 1 square by 1 plus gamma m 2 square, I had this. Now, I will substitute the m 2 square which we got last class, I wanted to write it separately. So, I will put a line here and write it here, m 2 square we got it to be 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square divided by 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1. I had this expression. Now, I want to substitute this m 2 square inside here. So, p 2 by p 1 will now become 1 plus gamma m 1 square divided by 1 plus gamma times that expression in here 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square divided by 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1. Now, I want to simplify this, it will come to very simplified expression, so I am I know that already, so I am going to say I want to simplify this. So, what I will do is, I will take this denominator, multiply it with this 1 and take that whole term to the numerator up there, that is all I am going to do, then it will become 1 plus gamma m 1 square times 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1 divided by this multiplied with the 1. So, that is going to be 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1 plus 2 gamma plus gamma times gamma minus 1 m 1 square. this is what I am getting here. Now, we want to simplify this expression further. I had this particular form, if I look at terms in here, if I group it in a particular form, it will come out to be nice, but let us say I will go one step slower, I will just try and simplify it the way it is already. What can I simplify here? minus gamma plus 2 gamma, I can simplify that, I am going to link these two okay. that can cancel each other. Of course, there is a plus 1 here, nothing can be done with it currently, there is a gamma, nothing can be done, 2 m 1, 2 gamma m 1 square is there, here there is minus gamma m 1 square. So, that can be simplified a little bit, I will remove that 2 with this minus 1. I will again link these two, 
this is how I cancelled it. So, the remaining terms just stay ok, there is a gamma m 1 square, there is a gamma square m 1 square and then there is a gamma and then there is a plus 1, those are the 4 terms that I have in the denominator ok. So, I will write this continue it here, I will keep the numerator as is. that is the same numerator. Now, in the denominator I will write it in a different form. So, it will be gamma plus 1 plus gamma m 1 square plus gamma square m 1 square this is what I have. I wrote it in a different order that is all I have done. So, this now if I look at these two terms this will just be gamma plus 1, there is a gamma here, there is no gamma here, that is the only way I look at it, gamma m 1 square can be common, this is what it comes out to be. So, now I can write this whole expression as p 2 by p 1 equals I get to this particular form ok. So, basically I have just pulled out a 1 plus gamma common here and the remaining will be 1 plus gamma m 1 square. Now, I am just directly going to cancel these two whatever I have left is my final answer. I can leave it like this or I can simplify it one more step which is what I will do ok. So, I am going to look at this term this is 1 minus gamma plus 2 gamma m 1 square. I want to make it 1 plus gamma on the top that is what I want to do. So, I will add and subtract gamma here minus gamma will go with this already existing minus gamma here. So, it will become minus 2 gamma and the remaining I will I'll write it one step here plus gamma minus gamma I have added these two terms here now and I am going to group this and this together. I am going to group these two together that will give me a minus 2 gamma and then the remaining term will be gamma plus 1. So, I will write it as 1 plus 2 gamma m 1 square minus 2 gamma divided by gamma plus 1 this is what I have which can further be simplified as 1 plus 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 times m 1 square minus 1 that is your final result. It is extremely simple this is equal to p 2 by p 1 I will write it here again. Okay. Very simple form easy to remember. Now, we will do the same thing for uh, rho 2 by rho 1 because I know this is going to give me a simple enough expression. Okay. We are going to start with what we have derived already. We have derived this long back that is 3 classes before I believe. It will just come out to be this form ok. Hopefully, you remember that we derived this long back it when we started with normal shock we derived this the very first class of normal shocks. Now, I want to substitute that p 2 by p 1 which we just derived in here ok and uh, it will become p 2 by p 1 I do not want to write it as 1 plus 2 gamma m 1 square. So, I will write it as gamma plus 1 divided by gamma plus 1. This way I can cancel the gamma plus 1 that is why I wrote this way and the other one will be gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 plus 1 plus 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 m 1 square minus 1 
here I am retaining the original form which we had p 2 by p 1 we derived just now. In the numerator I have multiplied this gamma plus 1 in there and put a common denominator gamma plus 1 that is what I have. I can cancel this gamma plus 1 directly there. So, I am going to have a slightly different expression which I have to rearrange eventually. So, I will start pulling out gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 okay, that is one term plus 2 gamma m 1 square by gamma minus 1 minus 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 and then plus 1 is there I will just keep it like that currently divided by now, I have to rearrange this whole group of terms. So, I will write it as currently gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 remains the same plus I will pull out this minus 1 with 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 along with this 1. So, it will become 1 plus gamma minus 2 gamma divided by gamma plus 1 plus 2 gamma m 1 square by gamma plus 1. It is all just algebra. I'm just rewriting things in one way or the other. Now, I have to simplify this. I will look at the numerator terms first. I will keep the m 1 square term separately. I will link all the other terms together. So, that is going to have a common denominator gamma minus 1. Numerator is gamma plus 1 for the first set and then I will take this minus 2 gamma and then this 1 can be written as gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. So, it will be gamma minus 1 this is all I am having. Now, if I look at it or oh, I will write the remaining one term also then I will write I will start cancelling things 2 gamma m 1 square by gamma minus 1. Denominator will come and write later, but as of now numerator everything goes away this whole term goes away only this term remains that is a nice thing about it. Now, we will go to the denominator. I will write it one more step like this gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 plus I will simplify this this will become 1 minus gamma by gamma plus 1. Plus 2 gamma m 1 square by gamma plus 1 this is what I have now. Now, I have to simplify this set of terms. If I make this multiply these two together it is going to have gamma square minus 1 as denominator and numerator will be gamma plus 1 square plus oh wait I am having 1 minus gamma and gamma minus 1. Okay, so, I am going to have a minus sign of minus of gamma minus 1 square this is what I will get. I can write this as minus of gamma minus 1 and then gamma minus 1 multiplying gamma minus 1 I am getting gamma minus 1 square. I am just looking at this one term right now in the denominator. I will write the whole thing later as of now I will just look at this term that is coming out to be this ok just this one term is this which now if you look at it it is going to be a square plus b square minus 2 a b and uh, you will find that a square and b square will get cancelled with this a square and b square only thing remaining will be this will have a plus 2 gamma minus minus 2 gamma that will give you 4 gamma total 4 gamma by gamma square minus 1 this is what I will have for just this set of terms remaining term exists still I will write this whole thing in the next corner again we already found that the numerator is very simple. 2 gamma m 1 square by gamma minus 1. Now, we have simplified the denominator and it looks like 4 gamma by gamma square minus 1 plus 2 gamma m 1 square by gamma plus 1. This is what I have. <coughs> now, I will take this gamma minus 1 to the denominator and multiply it throughout that is the next step. Okay. 
if I do that when I multiply that gamma minus 1 with this term gamma minus 1 into gamma plus 1 is what gave this. So, it will become gamma plus 1 in the denominator here we will write it one by one. So, it is going to be 2 gamma m 1 square divided by 4 gamma by gamma plus 1 plus 2 gamma into gamma minus 1 m 1 square by gamma plus 1 this is what I have. Now, I can take this common denominator gamma plus 1 and put it up, stay up there. So, I will rewrite it as 2 gamma into gamma plus 1 m 1 square divided by I am having 4 gamma plus Four gamma. Actually, I'll just take out the two gamma first, so that I can cancel it with the numerator. Two gamma into two plus gamma minus one m one square. We'll write it like this. This is what I have. If I write it up to this point, now I can cancel this two gamma with this two gamma, and uh, I don't think I can simplify this anymore. So that's my final expression. I will write rho 2 by rho 1 is equal to gamma plus 1 m 1 square divided by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square. It so happens that this is also equal to u 1 by u 2 why from mass equation. Okay. So, this is another set of relations we have given the m 1 I can find the rho 2 by rho 1 I can find u 1 by u 2 I already wrote an expression sometime back for the third board p 2 by p 1 in terms of m 1 square that is also given. So, the next thing left is t 2 by t 1 I tried deriving t 2 by t 1 in any simple form, but it is very very complex. So, we will just keep the simplest form m 1 square on the numerator. and this is the only form I will keep. Where is this coming from? I am going to say T naught 2 equal to T naught 1 and I am using energy equation basically T naught 2 by T naught T 2 T naught 2 by T 2 is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 2 square. Similarly, T naught 1 by T 1 will be 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square and I have just rearranged the 2 such that it looks like this. This is another expression. So, now after this whole set of expressions I just want to have in your notebook one page which will have all the formulae together for normal shocks like we did for isentropic relations. We want to have one page just all the possible relations for normal shocks. So, first thing I can directly say T naught 2 equal to T naught 1 we proved this long back we will just keep it that way. Next main thing I will divide the board somewhere here because I want to write some parallel set of relations there m 2 square we derived this towards the end of last class and we use this extensively today 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1 that is the next relation and then we just derived a whole set of relations I will write the whole set of them here p 2 by p 1 one nice form for p 2 by p 1 is 1 plus gamma m 1 square by 1 plus gamma m 2 square this is a nice form. So, I will always want to keep track of this another form which we derived today is this okay. Now, this can also be rearranged in one more form which we actually did today during one of the derivations it came out to be this. 
I am writing this also because this numerator is shared by the, this thing as a denominator that is the only reason why I will keep this, this denominator is same as this numerator that is the only reason I will like this form also in case sometimes I have m2 square multiplying p2 by p1 in any relation I may need to use this kind of form that is all ideally you can use any form it will automatically rearrange itself that is the beauty of math anyways now the next thing is rho 2 by rho 1 we know that it is equal to u1 by u2 which we just now derived so I will anyway write the expression here for completeness sake gamma plus 1 m1 square divided by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m1 square and uh, we said that there is no special relation for uh, t2 by t1 I will write that expression also here these are the set of relations we have one more I have not written here I will come back to it but before that I will also write the other set of parallel relations one ratio in terms of other it is supposed to be rho 2 by rho 1 that is one relation rho 2 by rho 1 in terms of p 2 by p 1 of course, it can be obtained by rearranging the top one of course, this is equal to u 1 by u 2. T 2 by T 1 in terms of P 2 by P 1 can be written in a different form. I do not think I derived this particular relation but it is not very difficult to get if I take this rho 2 by rho 1 and then I take this P 2 by P 1 I am going to say T 2 is P 2 by rho 2 T 1 is P 1 by rho 1. So, if I use this divided by this actually you know I do not need to do that I want everything in terms of P 2 by P 1. So, I am going to take this multiply this with p 1 by p 2 that will give me uh, I want the reciprocal of this multiplied by p 2 by p 1 that will give you this relation you can go write it it is not very difficult I will just write that expression here p 2 by p 1 times rho 1 by rho 2 I am using this rho 1 by rho 2 from here reciprocal of this multiplied by p 2 by p 1 then I will get to this form this is another form which you can get. Now, other than this I want to write one more expression here we have not yet derived it, but for completeness sake I will put it here and then I will derive it now ok. One simple thing is p naught 2 by p naught 1 ok this is not very difficult to derive I will just write it here we use a particular technique which is very common in gas dynamics. we have expanded this particular ratio into a multiple a product of three ratios this is a cyclic product of ratios that is what you have done ok. If you look at it I have expression for this in terms of 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 similar expression for this just the reciprocal of that and then p 2 by p 1 we have a relation here up already. So, I can get this p naught 2 by p naught 1 already. Of course, I can write that expression, but you know the expression I do not need to write it separately. One more remaining expression which belongs in this column I will write here is delta s by r the entropy change is equal to log of p naught 1 by p naught 2 where this delta s is actually s 2 minus s 1. It is actually S2 minus S1, 
is coming out to be log of p naught 1 by p naught 2. Now, this is the only thing which I have not derived, we will derive it now, not very difficult to derive, it is easy enough. I just have to start with the second class of our thermodynamics review, delta S is C p log T 2 by T 1 minus R log P 2 by P 1. We had this form already and uh, we are going to say calorically perfect gas kind of assumptions, this C p can be written as gamma R by gamma minus 1. Once I have this, I can pull out an R and put it below delta S. So, I will rewrite it as delta S by R equal to log of gamma by gamma minus 1 is in front of log. I can take it inside the log by putting power of T 2 by T 1. So, I will make it T 2 by T 1 to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 minus another log is there. So, it will become reciprocal of P 2 by P 1, so it will be P 1 by P 2. I have made it into one log, that is all I have done. Now, I have expressions for T 2 by T 1 and P 2 and P 1 by P 2, we just have to put the appropriate expressions and uh, it will be comfortable enough. And uh, if you use the wrong expression, I will get a very complicated relation, you have to use the correct one so that it looks simple enough. So, I want to make everything in terms of stagnation pressures and stagnation temperatures, okay, because I know something about the stagnation temperatures, they are equal. So, I will write this T 2 by T 1 as um, I will write it as T naught 1 by T 1 divided by T naught 2 by T 2 multiplied by T naught 2 by T naught 1, this is correct. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I will write an expression for this in terms of m 1, I will write a function expression for this in terms of m 2, that will come out to be and I know that this is equal to 1, okay, T naught 2 equal to T naught 1 across a normal shop. So, I can just use this, now I will go look at the remaining terms alone that will be 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 2 square, I have this. Now, I have to look at p 1 by p 2, this can be written in terms of stagnation pressures again, that is going to become p naught 2 by p 2 divided by p naught 1 by p 1 multiplied by p naught 1 by p naught 2, I will write it like this. Currently, we will keep it like this p naught 1 by p naught 2, we do not, we know that it is not equal to 1, it is something other than 1, we will keep it, but the other two expressions I can write in terms of 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square, p naught 1 by p naught 2 times 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 2 square to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square again to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. Now, if I go back to my delta S by R expression, I have a T 2 by T 1 to the power gamma by gamma minus 1, that is T 2 by T 1 to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 will be this, this to the power gamma by gamma minus 1, while this is P 1 by P 2 expression is here, which is also having almost this to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. If I look at carefully, m 2 square is the denominator here and the numerator, when I multiply these two they will get cancelled, similarly m 1 square will get cancelled with this one. So, finally, I will be left with this p naught 1 by p naught 2. So, that is how I am deriving this delta S by R will finally, just come down to log of p naught 1 by p naught 2. Okay. This is S 2 minus S 1 is p naught 1 by p naught 2 that is what you will get okay. and of course, you should know from here that uh, p naught 2 is always less than p naught 1, because we want entropy to be increasing, delta S has to be positive, which means this log has to be positive, which will happen only if the ratio is more than 1 
So, I can tell that P naught 2 is less than P naught 1 directly. Okay. So, this is the derivation for the previous uh, page I gave you a formula sheet. Now, you have come to a point where we have to get more physical feel for stuff. So, we will go and plot thermodynamic process. I am going to look for thermodynamic process here. I am looking at T s diagram. T s diagram. So, first thing I will mark will be a T 0 because I know it is a constant. Now, I will mark a P 0 1, this is T 0 uh, T 0 1 or T 0 2 both are equal I just put T 0. Now, I will mark a P 0 1 that will be some curve. You know that constant pressure curves on T s diagram will be exponential curves. So, it is going like this. I will put it as P 0 1 that is pressure equal to P 0 1 will be this curve. Now, I am telling that for this T 0 T star is here and I am saying my flow incoming is supersonic which means my P 1 T 1 will be somewhere lower. This is my T 1 line and I know this is the stagnation condition which means this is the entropy value. So, my P 1 must pass through this point that will be another exponential curve going like this, this is my P 1 curve. So, my actual state on this diagram is P 1 T 1 which will be this point that is my initial point that is where I am. From here I am going to a subsonic line that is I am crossing this line and going above. So, let us say this is my T 2. I am crossing my T star and going to some higher temperature. As I am doing that, I am also increasing entropy. So, I will put an entropy line here. So, this will be my new state. And so, I am going to put a P 2 line through that curve through that actually this is my P 2 curve. So, this is my actual state T 2 S 2 I will call this S 1 this is S 2 T 2 S 2 will define my state right 2 thermodynamic variables or I could use T 2 P 2 that will define my state anyways. So, I am having these two this this is my state 1 and this is my state 2 one more thing missing is P 0 2 it is just extending it through an imaginary isentropic process from 2 to 0 to that will reach there. So, I will draw another curve here that is my P 0 2. It is already seen directly that my pressure drops P 0 2 should be less than P 0 1 graphically also you can see that. Now, my actual process of shock is this this line I will draw a double line. So, that I will tell that this is my shock this is the actual process for the shock. When I say a process, I do not know what is the exact path it is taking. All I know is it starts with 1 and ends with 2. I have drawn a curve like this. Maybe somebody else will draw a curve like this. I do not want to disturb this picture. I will just take another 1 and 2. I have drawn a curve like this. Maybe somebody else will draw a curve like this. Both are valid in my opinion. Okay because we know only starting point and ending point I do not know how it goes through this currently. Okay. Both are equivalent in my opinion. So, what we can say is from here the gas jumps from this state to this state within a thin layer and we do not have details of what is it doing inside the thin layer. Okay. All we know is it is jumping from here to there. So, ideally we should not be worrying about what is the path it takes there is no path inside the shock it is a very thin layer. So, that is the detail I have here. Now, we will go for P V diagram. Of course, every time I draw a T S diagram, I will immediately go to P V diagram. You have to get used to this. You should be able to handle the problem in both the coordinate systems. Okay. Now, here I have to draw first a constant temperature line, my T naught line, which will be a hyperbola. So, it is going to look something like this. 
T naught equal to constant that is the T naught line. Now, I have to say this is my P naught 1, I will pick a P naught 1, wherever this line goes and meets my T naught 1 that is my stagnation 1 condition, 0 1 condition will be T naught 1 and P naught 1 wherever that meets that is my stagnation condition. Now, from there I have to go to different temperatures, what did we do here we went to T star. So, I will draw a T star curve which will be a lesser temperature than that will be another hyperbola this is my T star line. Actually what I want is T 1 line, it should be below this that is all I want. So, I will draw a T 1 line, okay. once I have drawn a T 1 line oh I need to extend it further, I will extend this T 1 curve all the way up to that, this is my T 1 curve. I know the stagnation condition, I have to go to the static condition. How should I go? I have to go along isentropic curve. So, I will draw isentropic curve through this point stagnation condition, which will be having a more steeper curve that is what is interesting right. It will be a curve like this, of course it will never cross 0, it is going to turn and go become something like that. Okay. Now, so this is my state, state 1 and if I draw a line along this that is my P 1, that is my P 1 line okay. and of course, if I want density 1 it will be reciprocal of this particular V 1 that is all. Now, I have this, this is my state 1 and I am saying it is having the same T naught, but it is going to have a lower P naught after it crosses. So, I will mark a P naught 2 and the same T naught and P naught 2 will mean this is the new stagnation condition P naught 2 T naught 2 that is this point. Now, I know my final state T 2 must be sitting somewhere along this isentropic line, this is my S 1, this is my S 2 line, I have to draw a S 2 line, it will be a line like this. Now, I have to tell my solution is somewhere between T naught 2 or T naught and T star. Okay. So, let us pick this line as my T 2, so, I have drawn it wrong, it should be in between that these two other two curves. So, it will be more steep something like this, that is my T 2 curve. So, I am getting a P 2 line. I am just checking whether I have drawn the curves correctly, it is close enough to say that it is ok. Kay. I have to make sure that it is compression, right. I should not pick a crazy delta p that it will look like expansion, that is all. Kay. So, currently I have made sure that it is close. Kay. This is my state 1 and V2 is less than V1 which says I am going through a compression process, everything is matching. So, now my state the pro process is something from 1 to 2, again I will draw a double line because there are so many curves. This is my jump across the shock, it is going from this point 1 to this point 2, we do not know how it goes, all we know is this is the starting point, this is the ending point, intermediate path we do not know, we will leave it like that for now. So, at any time you should know that in a PV diagram my curve is going to go up and to the left for a shock and in a TS diagram it is going to go up and to the right, okay. it is easy to tell shock heats the gas and it also increases entropy that will tell you it is going up and to the right. In a PV diagram it is going to compress the gas and increase pressure, volume decreases pressure increases it is going to go to the left, okay, left and top, easy way to think about this. Now, we want to do some analysis with the expressions we got today. Okay. So, uh, maybe I will there is just enough time to show some plots. So, I will show you the plots, then we will do the analysis next time. So, I will go to these plots in here. What I am showing you here is uh, P2 by P1 and T2 by T1. 
on the same axis. While the solid lines are given by P2 by P1, this three lines here, the yellow is not very clear. This line that is your uh, T2 by T1 for one of the gamma values, I believe uh, this is having highest compression. I am not able to see the color, I think this is yellow, is that right? So, that is 1.67. Okay. Gamma equal to 1.67, T2 by T1 curve looks like. I have drawn this for three different gamma values, okay, gamma equal to 1.3, 1.4 and 1.67, that is why it is coming out to be and uh, similarly here 1.3, 1.4, 1.67, that is what I am having here. What we are seeing first observation should be that as my Mach number increases, I have drawn from 1 to 10, as my Mach number increases, both my ratios increase, that is if my shock strength is higher, I am going to have higher and higher pressure ratio or temperature ratio. Next detail, I can say that pressure ratio is much higher than temperature ratio, okay, that is the next observation. If I have drawn a density ratio on the same plot, it will go in between these two sets of curves, okay, but I have not drawn it, it will look more confusing. So, I did not draw it there, we will look at row 2 by row 1, but we will look at it later. Okay. So, if I have drawn it, that will go somewhere in between these two. And actually, you know that uh, rho 2 by rho 1 times T2 by T1 is your P2 by P1, right. So, when I multiply this curve and some other curve here, it will give me this curve, that is what it should be. I have drawn the rho 2 by rho 1 curve in the middle here, that is all I have done. If I look at the effect of gamma value, when my gamma value is low for the same R and T, my speed of sound will be lesser. What does that mean? If my speed of sound is lesser, my gas is very compressible okay. and uh, if not, my gas is less compressible. What we are finding is for a given Mach number, if my gas is less compressible, I am having better compression, that is the pressure increases more. If not, pressure increases less, that is what we are seeing actually. This is for this particular case, temperature also does exactly the same thing. As I become more and more compressible, the gas uh, the gets compressed less. Okay. Uh, I can give you a reason for this, but uh, I do not think it is useful in this particular course, it is something to do with the internal energy. Gas will rearrange that compression that is the pressure energy in other internal energy modes, that is what is happening inside. Okay, when gamma decreases, your C V and C P values will increase and that is what is causing this. Okay. Uh, no more details than this, we will go to the next plot, I <coughs> will go to some other plot and come back to this. One. Now, I am looking at M 2 versus M 1, I have also given U 2 by U 1 ratio in this dotted line, we will first look at M 2 versus M 1. What we are seeing is, as I increase my Mach number, my M2 drops, it drops steeply up to around Mach 3. After that, when I go to very high Mach number, say around Mach 6 and above, does not look like M2 changes much, it is almost a constant. Okay. In fact, we can show asymptotic analysis will show you that it will go to some particular number. We will look at numbers, but I will do that next class, we will not do it now, okay. but uh, I will look at U2 by U1 here. We are again seeing that u2 by u1 is dropping and then becoming constant for hypersonic velocities, hypersonic Mach numbers. When we go very high Mach numbers, say above 7 or so, they are almost a constant, u2 by u1 is a constant, m2 is a constant for each of the gamma values, any gamma for that instance. Now, we will look at details of what happens when gamma changes. If my m2, uh, if my gamma is 1.67, my m2 is the highest. When my gamma decreases, that is my gas is more and more compressible, my Mach number drops, that is what we are seeing. Okay. If my Mach number drops, my velocity decreases, my temperature increases, right. that is what decreases my Mach number or you can think about it as R changes, but we will not worry about R change currently, we will have simple enough gas. Okay. So, if my gas is more and more compressible. I can go to lower Mach numbers, 
that is what we are saying right and uh, here you will say that if my gas is more and more compressible i will get even lower velocities compared to the previous velocity that is what i'll see here now we'll go look at the next this curve i have already seen this one p not 2 by p not 1 the stagnation pressure at drop okay. what i'm seeing here is p not 2 by p not 1 is dropping very steeply for low Mach numbers that is 1 to 4 or so it is dropping very steeply after that the ratio is going to somewhat constant it is almost 0 but I will tell you if I plot it in log scale it will keep on dropping it will never go to a steady state it will never go to asymptote it will keep on dropping that will be the case here okay. and uh, if I look at again gamma high value it is having less drop gamma low value it has more drop okay. this is again related to internal energy adjustment inside your gas and because of that your entropy increases which is equivalent to say that your p naught drops only one more plot that is your delta s by r which we just derived an expression for if you look here if my gas is more compressible then I am having a condition where if my gas is more compressible that is gamma is lesser I am finding that delta s is higher there is more internal energy rearrangement because of which you are getting more entropy I cannot prove this in this course that is beyond this course if you know molecular gas dynamics we can talk about it currently you just assume that I am right that is all when the gas is more compressible I will get higher entropy for the same Mach number you looked at effects only based on Mach number as of now okay. now the only thing left to do in this set of things is go and look at this m2 why is a, what is this asymptote value for a given gamma value for a given gamma it is one particular asymptotic value we can look at that and we can show that p2 by p1 or t2 by t1 will not go to any asymptote those are the things we can show here and what happens to this particular condition when m equal to 1 we will look at that also what should be the value for p2 by p1 when m equal to 1 it just becomes 1 okay. we should be able to get from our relations we will look at all that uh, this time okay. next class at the beginning we will do that we will hopefully remember all these plots and we will just start with the equations next time see you people next class